What is scientific racism? The idea that the world can be divided into racial groups with biological, moral, and intellectual differences is not based on scientific evidence. Nevertheless, some people believe racial groups are biologically distinct and whites are intellectually superior. And scientists have used scientific racism to provide support for these false beliefs. The use of science or pseudoscience to rationalize racial inequality can be traced back to Carolus Linnaeus, the first scientist to classify human beings into racial categories with distinct moral and intellectual traits. Scientific racism has evolved over time, from Linnaeus's rudimentary classifications, to the measurement of brain size using mustard seeds, to IQ tests. Intelligence testing, the attempt to quantify intellectual ability, has a sordid history. An early 20th century scientist, Henry H. Goddard, gave an intelligence test to immigrants arriving on Ellis Island. The majority of these immigrants received a low score, likely because they were recovering from a long voyage across the Atlantic. But eugenicists used Goddard's finding that immigrants scored low on these tests to argue that the United States should limit immigration from certain countries. Eugenicists believed they could improve the biological fitness of the population through immigration policies as well as sterilization. Eugenicists were successful in getting immigration laws changed to drastically reduce the migration of people from Africa, Asia, and Southern and Eastern Europe. Eugenicists were also responsible for sterilization programs. 60,000 people in the United States were sterilized because they scored low on intelligence tests. One of the main proponents of eugenics was Madison Grant. He's the author of the 1916 book, The Passing of the Great Race, where he argued that Nordics were the master race and that inferior races should be sterilized. Adolf Hitler referred to Grant's book as his Bible. Hitler put Grant's ideas into practice when he passed the eugenic sterilization law in 1933. This law led to the sterilization of 225,000 people in Germany in just three years. The Nazis then took these ideas several steps further, first to euthanasia and then to the gas chambers. Despite these atrocities, ideas of innate intellectual inferiority and superiority have not disappeared. In 1994, psychologist Richard Herrnstein and political scientist Charles Murray published a book called The Bell Curve, which argues that intelligence is hereditary and varies by race. Ten years later, Frank Mealy and Vincent Sarek argued in their book, Race, The Reality of Human Differences, that races are a biological reality and that there are measurable intellectual differences between racial groups. And in 2009, a Harvard doctoral student named Jason Richwine defended a dissertation in which he argued that Latino immigrants have a substantially lower IQ than whites. Richwine further argued we should reduce Latino immigration because of the supposedly hereditary nature of IQ. These are the same arguments made by eugenicists in the early 20th century. Sociologists identify such arguments as examples of pseudoscience, beliefs or practices appearing to be scientific, but based more on personal biases than on scientific findings. Today, we know there is no scientific basis for dividing humans into genetically distinct racial groups and that the social environment plays a significant role in shaping intelligence. Nevertheless, we can anticipate that scientific racism will continue to be propagated as science has long been used to justify racial inequality. As science evolves, 
soda scientific racism.